In order to understand key rate duration, we must first understand just the concept of normal duration. So let's walk through that with an example of a bond. Now I've got the specifications of this example bond in the top left corner. So we're gonna say that it has a time to maturity in years of five and a coupon rate of 6%. And so I've mapped out each year in the rows in this table, right? So year one, year two, year three. So this is saying that at the end of year one, we're gonna receive a $60 coupon payment, right? The coupon rate multiplied by the $1,000 notional of the bond. And then at the end of year two, we'll receive $60. And year three and year four will be the same. But then at the end of year five, we get the $1,000 notional value of the bond plus the $60 payment. So here I've mapped out just a the yield curve. So each one of these represents a spot rate that you're going to discount the cash flow at that point in time. So for the first year when you receive your $60 cash flow, you will discount it by that 2% and and then that'll get you a present value today of $58.82. Now we do that for each one of these cash flows and then we sum them all up and we get a present value of $987.33. Now to calculate duration, we need to find out what percentage of each present value for each year is reflected in the total present value. So we're gonna see for year one, that answer or that percentage is 5.96%. And so if we sum all these up, we'll find this adds up to 100. But then we need to multiply the period, so for year one, by that weight, and we do that for each of these um, each of these years, and then we find our total duration. Okay, this this could be called Macaulay duration. So that is a uh, 4.44%. So this says that whenever the yield curve shifts by 1%, let's say if the yield curve goes up 1%, then the value of this bond, the present value of this bond is going to fall by 4.44%. So we can see this when I put in uh, shift values here. So let's say it went up by one, and then you see the value of that bond, it fell by about that 4.44% that we saw before. But what happens if it uh, the yield curve shifts downwards 1%. Now the value of the bond is higher, right? That inverse relationship. And we can see on this graph how the original curve is different from that shifted curve. But this is all duration tells us. All it tells us is what happens when the yield curve shifts up and down. But this is never what happens in reality. Um, what happens in reality is that um, different points of this curve shift upwards or downwards. What happens when the Federal Reserve um, raises rates? It only raises them on the short end, right? What happens when the yield curve steepens? That means rates in the long term are going up, but not necessarily in the short term. So what we actually need to look at is key rate duration, because this will actually show us what's happening when rates are changing along the yield curve at different points, not just total shifts in the curve. So let's take a look at this. So I'm gonna put, uh, let's just say the curve shifted 1%, so that measure of duration was valuable for that. But we need to find out what happens when the curve changes different amounts at different intervals. So let's say that the Federal Reserve announced they were gonna drop short-term interest rates by about 2%, so we can make this adjustment. Now you can see that this um, shifted curve is deviating from the shape of the original curve. But what happens if it increases on the long end? So we'll say it went up by 2%. So you can see these ref reflected in this uh, shifted curve column. Okay, and this would probably be a more accurate look at how does the yield curve behave in real life. So I've got this formula here for the key rate duration. So what it's finding is that for um, a 1% change in interest rates at a certain point in the curve, um, what is the key rate duration? So that's saying when the interest rates decrease, the price of the bond when the interest rates decrease minus the price of the bond when the interest rates increase divided by two times the 1% change multiplied by the original price of the bond before any shifts in the curve.